Hello and welcome to this video. Now understanding these top five mistakes that artists make marketing their art will be a total game changer for you. Well, that's what I really hope anyway. Now I'm sure if you're watching this channel, it's because you want to sell more of your art or art services, build an art business, or ultimately make a full-time living from your passion. And one of the biggest stumbling blocks for most artists is of course the marketing. Now, love it or hate it, it's just not going to get the sales without it, I'm afraid. So it's time to buckle up, get super clear on a few things that we're going to be covering in this video. And then, of course, start to take daily consistent action. Now, in case we haven't met, I'm Sophie, artist, coach and entrepreneur, helping artists just like you to make more art sales by building a profitable business. Now, please do consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you really love the content, please do give me a thumbs up because it really helps this video and this channel to be seen by more artists just like you. Okay, so just a quick personal note before we talk about those five mistakes, you might be wondering where my hair is up. <laughs> I never normally shoot a video with the hair up. The hair is always down, kind of looking floaty and nice in my studio. Well, I got down here at crack of, crack of dawn this morning because it's a super hot West Australian day. I recorded the whole video, made loads of mistakes as you do, recorded the whole thing, sat down with a nice iced coffee, ready to edit, and none of the audio had recorded. I wanted to cry. Please leave a comment in the comments below if you have ever done anything equivalent to that and you just don't want to do it again, right? It's like, I've got to do the whole thing again. Even the iced coffee is not really cutting it. Okay, so without further ado, let's look at those top five mistakes that artists make marketing their art. Number one, not having a clear niche and target market. So think what happens every time somebody sees your product or service for the very first time. Do they understand immediately what you're selling and to whom? If they don't think it's for them or it's confusing in any way, shape or form, they are going to leave. So if you want to build a successful business, make good money doing what you love, then it's time to leave all those endless things that we know that you can do and choose one of them and hone it, become great at it and niche down into it. Because at that point, it's much easier then to carve out your section of the market. So your target market, the people that love what it is that you do, not all the other stuff around it. And I get so many people saying to me, but I don't want a niche because what about somebody over here? Or what about somebody over here? Or I do all these different things. Look, we're creatives. We all do lots of things, all right? hidden over there is a weaving that I really just want to finish and put on my sort of side hustle hobby Etsy store, if you like, because I enjoy doing it. Am I going to make a big deal out of it? No. Am I going to put it as, oh, I do this and this and this and this? No, 100% not. And it's really important that you don't do the same thing. So pick one thing that you love. And if you need more help on choosing your niche, finding that target audience, I'm going to put a link to a couple of videos that I think you're going to absolutely love if you haven't seen them already. They're all about how to find your niche and how to find your target audience. And I'll put links to those directly below this video. All right. So once you've done that, then it's time for us to move on to number two mistake. And that, of course, is not having a marketing plan and a weekly routine. Now, for all you planners out there, you're going to have perked up. And you're going to go, Sophie, a plan, a routine. I love it. But for all those creatives who like to go with the flow, please, before you press pause or delete or leave, just hear me out because it's really, really critical to your success. You're here, right? Because you want to sell more. And that's going to mean doing some things that perhaps you don't love. But, you know, there's a possibility to turn that around. When I started out in business, I hated all this stuff. I didn't want to do any of this stuff at all. And now I've learned to love it because I understand the marketing that I'm doing is leading to more people to see what I do and more opportunity for people to buy and become regular customers. Here's the thing. Most artists aren't doing anywhere near enough marketing. Some of them, and it could be you that I'm speaking to, are not doing any. Right? You create something, you put it on the website and you go, that's great, my art's on this website and you're sitting waiting for the sales to happen. It's not going to happen. You put on a show, you hire a space in your town or city and you go, great, I'm going to have a solo show or maybe there's a few of you, we're going to have a show, we're in there for two weeks and 
you sit there at the door going, oh, there's somebody coming past, there's somebody coming, there's somebody coming. Oh, they've walked right past. All right, <laughs> leave a comment below if that's you. Look, been there, done that, learned really fast. So if you hired a space, I used to hire a space back in Brighton in the UK when I first built my art business. And every summer I'd hired this gallery space um, because it was on the seafront. And I knew that there were thousands of people walking past. But were they my customers? Likely not. So I had to let people know, I'll be on the seafront between these two times. Come down and check it out. I'll have a special offer for you. I'll have a coffee waiting for you. Come and sit with me. Come and see what I'm doing. I had to send people there, right? And that's the thing. If you don't have a plan and a routine to help you do these things, you're going to be that person who's going to spend money renting a space, putting your artwork and sitting there watching the people walk past. Or you're going to spend money designing a website and having a website built. You're going to put all your art up and you're going to sit staring at it every day. You're going to look at the emails, you look at PayPal and you're going to go on your Stripe account and go, where's my money? All right. So in order to avoid all of that, you've got to learn to love marketing. And the first thing we need is a simple plan. Just last week, actually, I ran a live kind of walkthrough of my artist marketing plan that I have created for my Art Business Academy membership members. And a few members came and joined and we had the most amazing live session. I walked everybody through the plan. Now, even though they've got it as members and there's a training on how to fill it out, pretty sure not everybody's done it. So we had a fantastic time. And there was a lovely lady who was struggling a little bit. She does pet portraits. And I said, how about I build a whole marketing plan around your business or one way that you could build it. And she was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So I did that for her and I, I really enjoyed the process. Does that make me a bit of a nerd? Yes, possibly, but I really love doing it. And we really love that call. So if you want to be part of that vibe, if you're listening to all of this and you're thinking, this is all just too much for me, don't forget that below here, I've got links to my Art Business Academy monthly membership. It's super easy to join. If you click the link, there's all the information. It's got all the page, what you get every month, what, and actually we get, you get more than what's on there, but what you get every month, what you have access to, what you can do, how you can use it, all from $21 a month. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Um, and I love doing these bonus things. So we're talking about marketing a lot at the moment. At the time of shooting this video, it's February, and we've done a lot of business planning. There are lots of business plan pre-calls, and now we're focused really on marketing this month. And so we're going to do something, I think, later on in the month, again, around sales platforms or something. It's a lot of fun. But the other thing you could do if you don't want to do that is also a link below here to watch my Simple Art Marketing Plan video that I made. Um, and you can start making yours there. Number three is, of course, not building your mailing list and keeping in touch regularly. If you're a regular here, you'll know that I love to talk about this all the time. And if you don't do this piece, it's just going to be really hard for you to get any traction. So every single time that you want to offer something, that solo show, new items listed in your store, whatever it might be for you, it's almost like you're going to have to start from scratch. You're going to have to attempt to market to what we call a cold audience. There's people that don't know. That's like you opening the door from that um, hired venue and waving at the people walking past going, hello, hello, would you be interested in my art? And they look at you kind of go, I'm not remotely interested in art, thank you very much. And you've got to keep doing that, shouting through the door onto the street, hey, would you like, until somebody goes, oh yeah, I quite like art. I'll maybe come in and look at yours. That's what you're going to be doing every single time from scratch. So you get people who are vaguely interested, you know, I like art, so I'll come in, let's see if I like yours. They might walk around two minutes, they're like, not really my cup of tea, I'm out. You've got to keep shouting down the street, hello, do you like art? Do you like my art? Do you want to come in? What a lot of effort, all right? It's not something I want to be doing. So what you really need to be doing is building that list of people who are interested. They're the people that go, I like what you're doing. I'm maybe never going to buy anything. I, I used to have this woman, actually, when I first started my coaching business that I did after my art business, I had a bit of a creative breakdown. That's part of my story. And I went into coaching and helping others. And I used to have this woman come to the workshops and she used to say to me at the end, thank you so much for that talk workshop, she said, you know I'm never gonna buy anything, don't you? And it used to make me laugh every single time. And I'd give her a big hug and I'd say, it's not what it's about. I love that you're here and I love that you show up and you're learning something every single time. And it just used to, yeah, it used to really sort of touch me. She just had to let me know, I'm not gonna buy anything. So some people might join your list and they might never buy. Some people might join your list, 
not read an email for years, and then suddenly the timing is right, they're like, need some art for my walls, and down comes the email, and they're looking at it going, oh my God, this new collection is amazing, this is exactly what we want. Some people will engage and read it every single week, sometimes they'll send you a message back, oh, I really love what you, you know, let, what you sent around on our email, or I clicked your link and I looked at what you're doing over on your Pinterest board, or whatever it is that you send them. And that's key. You need to keep in touch with them. You can't just, people can't just join your list and then you only send them an email when you have something to sell because that will be a disaster, right? We're not going to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to give people the opportunity to join the list, their decision, their choice. Yes, I want to hear more from you. And then you're going to send them those emails. Like, hey, this is what happened in the studio. Something really funny. I tipped a paint pot right, right all over there. Look what I managed to do with this or something like that. Or here's a blog I've written about the inspiration for my latest collection, or I've just started offering workshops. You know, click here if you're somebody that might like to be interested in workshops in the future. You know, whatever it's going to be, you need to keep in touch. It doesn't need to be a long, massive, great email because people don't read those. It can be short and sweet with some pictures. And every now and then you can send out maybe like a summary newsletter type email with things they might have missed. Um, and then, of course, you will be making offers to them. And that's what they're going to expect. That's why they've joined the mailing list, right? So really, every time you do have something new, instead of going out to that cold audience and shouting out of the door, you let them know, right? And then they have the opportunity of buying. And a proportion of them will. And that's kind of what we call the sales conversion. So that email will convert into a certain number of sales. And really, all you're doing is you're building the list. You're communicating regularly. You're offering that list of warm people what it is you have on offer. Much easier, I would say. Now, if there's something you've not done yet, I have a free resource, my 10-day mailing list challenge. You get an email every day, I think it goes something like that, and it gives you the different sections you need to do to put your mailing list together. Pretty simple. All right, mistake number four, not driving enough traffic to your listings um, or your offline places. So traffic really is another word for people. So imagine that gallery space that we've mythically hired, the door we've opened and we've <laughs> call that onto the street. Those people that are walking past are what's known in the online world as traffic. So you have a clear niche. You have your target audience, your marketing plan in place, you have a mailing list set up, and now you're still waiting for those sales. You're like, Sophie, you said the sales would come. And we're going, whoa, hold on a minute. We've got a lot of stuff set up, but we're not quite ready yet. So we're not making the sales yet because not enough people are coming to see that that gallery space, your solo show, the beautiful listings, the workshop that you have going on. So it's your job now to create lots and lots and lots of what we call traffic. It can be free, it can be paid for, it can be what we call content marketing, where you're writing a blog or doing what I'm doing, making a video, or it could be that you run ads. So one way or a couple of ways to do this for free would be using a platform like Pinterest. Pinterest, I was about to try and say two things together there, Pinterest is a massive traffic driver to a site. So if you'd like an updated, if you'd like me to do an updated video on Pinterest, please leave a comment and say yes please to the Pinterest video. Because I looked at the one I have, I think it's two years old. So I could definitely do with a refresh. Or of course YouTube, you're watching it, you're on here, right? You're looking for information. So if you offer any form of like workshops or content that could be put into video, this is a great way to send traffic to wherever. What have I been doing all this video? I've been saying I've got a free resource below here. I've got this, click below here. Right? And what's happening is my mailing list is growing off the back of these videos every single month. All right, number five mistake that artists are making when marketing or not marketing <laughs> their art is not communicating the benefits of what is on offer. Okay, next big mistake is that hoping your product or service is gonna sell on its own. You've got all of this stuff going. You've now sent all the traffic on top of that. People are now at the door, they're looking, okay? And, and what we're hoping is, we're sitting watching, going in my bank, refreshing my bank account. It's not quite happening yet because there's one more piece of the puzzle, right? And you might be lucky, you might be somebody comes in and goes, I want that one, I love it. It's great, but is that gonna happen consistently? I'm going to tell you the answer. That is a definite no. It's not going to happen consistently. Right? You're going to need to help that to happen. And the way we're going to do that is focus on benefits over features. Because what happens is, for example, the online listing. You go to online list your, I know, your original art, your print, your product, whatever it might be. 
take a piece of, let's take a painting. So we list a painting, we put a picture of it, we might now put a picture of it hanging in a fake room, and then we put um, the title and we say 30 by 40 oil on canvas with blah, blah, blah. And here are all the technical bits that you and I love to know, but your customer is, wants to know the size and the price. That's useful information. Now they've got the picture, which they might have fallen in love with. But what if it comes at a two or three or five thousand pound dollar euro price bracket? Now they're looking and they're looking at the bit of information they've got the title of the piece, maybe a couple of liners. They know it's an oil painting, like an, like an oil painting. They're fishing around, kind of going, oh, I'm not really sure. And then something happens, the doorbell rings, the phone rings, and off they go. Sale doesn't happen. All right, as opposed to they're on there, they love it, they see it. They see information about the painting, the size, the details, the specs, boring, okay, they love the painting, not interested in that. Now suddenly it's a, for example, it might be this month, free delivery. It might be buy this painting and I'll send you two free prints of the work to give out to friends and family. Nice. Okay. That's a benefit. But then not only that, that's the benefit of the business that you're running. What about a benefit of buying the original art itself? So I knew, you know, and I wouldn't put this underneath. I'd put this at the top. This beautiful piece of original art is going to be the central focal point of your room. People, it's going to be the talking point when people come to dinner. It's going to light you up every time you come in that room. Supposing you do, I don't know, landscapes of specific areas. So people would buy it because it reminds them they went on holiday there. Every time you come in the room, you're going to be reminded of that amazing holiday that you had with your you know, loved one or family or however you're going to phrase it. And suddenly they're thinking, oh my God, you know, and this collectible piece of art is part of just I know, a small collection of 10 pieces you know and it won't be offered again and still it starts to kind of build and they're getting excited now you could own one of 10 from this collection you know imagine imagine positioning it so that the light just falls naturally and every day you sit there at the breakfast table i don't know glancing across to the wall remembering that incredible trip and so grateful that you have an original piece of art from a local artist hanging on your walls. All right, what's the difference between that and it's 30 by 40 oil on canvas? All right, that's just gonna tip that person over the edge because they're thinking, oh my God, that's me. I'm sitting looking at that every morning. I'm looking at that, having that memory. Or every day I'm being inspired by the color. Or if you do abstracts, you know, every day you're going to see something new in the painting. My challenge to you is every day stand in front of this painting and see if you can see something new. Now suddenly their emotions are being triggered and people buy when the emotions are triggered. Right? When we're looking at buying a washing machine, we look at the specs because we want it to do certain things. But the benefits then really is that you have the benefit of a good washing machine is that you have clean and reasonably well spun items. They come out as good as new, right? That's the benefit. But at the end of the day, washing machine, you're never really going to feel an emotional connection with a washing machine. Yes, you want the features. Yes, the benefits. If I buy this now, it's got this, this, and this. Lovely. But a piece of artwork that's been made, it's a one-off. It's collectible. You know, it's going to um, increase in price. It's an investment. Buying original art is an investment. These are the benefits. These are the reasons why people are going to buy your product over somebody else's, right? And this is really the key that so many people are missing out on. Why? Because it takes a bit of time. It takes a bit of effort to come up with this stuff. But I promise you, I promise you, if you do, you'll see the difference. It's what's called the conversion. So all these people are going to land on wherever they're landing. They're going to see the benefit. Just like when they go through the door to your solo show, um, and they see the artist, that's quite nice. And you and you see them looking at something and you come up and you can sense, can't you, whether somebody wants a conversation or not. And you say, oh, I can see you're looking into that. You know, here's what inspired me about this piece. And you start talking, you're triggering their emotions. The next thing you know, they're getting their wallet out. Okay, so we're gonna remember that overall, people buy benefits, not features. So if you take that piece away from this bit of the video, then I reckon you're golden. And by not doing these simple tasks, you're just losing sales. All right, so look, here's a task that you could do, and I really would love if you would do. Just be 
open to the possibility that you can improve what you've got going. So you're going to look, if you've got a website, you're going to look at it with a critical eye. Or even better, you get a mystery shopper. You get somebody else to come and look at it and say, how does it look? Would you buy it? Would the listings work? Do they light you up? Do you feel like you want to buy it? And really go through everything that you've got. And if you've got an open studio or a show that you're setting up, really look at it. Look at everything that you're doing. You're running a workshop. Look at the flyers. Look at the presentation. Look at the whole package. Where could you improve? Is your customer going to be going, oh, my God, I must have that? And then, you know, here's the last thought on that. If you've ever had that experience of, I must have that, what is it that got you to that place? As cat, it was guaranteed, it's a piece of writing that got your emotions, you know, going. You were like, oh my God, I must have that item. All right, food for thought, I reckon. So I'm gonna play this game again. If you are still watching, please put a comment below and say, Sophie, I watched right to the end. I love you, I applaud you, thank you so much. If you haven't already, check out this video, five things to focus on in your art business in 2024, um, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, goodbye.